welcome to the Selfish Maker podcast. My name is Jasmine and I am a local yarn store worker in Calgary, Alberta. I am here to start a podcast to talk about my recent makes and works in progress. Um, I I have, this is my very first one, so I'm a little bit nervous. So if I stutter a little bit, I apologize. I'm doing my best. Um, today, I'm going to start this podcast with a little bit about me and then we'll get into some works in progress and some finished objects that I've done in the month of February. Um, yeah, so let's just get into it. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am 26 years old. I live in Calgary, Alberta, like I said, and I work in a local yarn store here. Um, I have been a crafty person since a very young age. I started knitting at around 10 or 11 and around that same time I learned how to sew on a sewing machine. Before that I would hand sew um, and play with pretty much any thing I could get my hands on to be crafty and create things. I my grandma put me into sewing classes because I started raiding her sewing room and I started playing and making little outfits out of her fabric stash, which now that I'm an adult <laughs> sounds really annoying, but she was very patient with me and put me into sewing classes. And that was in September. And then I had a friend who knew how to crochet. And so I wanted to learn how to do things with yarn as well. So I taught myself how to crochet with my fingers. And I didn't have a crochet hook, I just had a little bit of yarn. And that Christmas, my grandma bought me a kit for learning to knit. And while it was good intention, I was, I'm was i left-handed. And so it was difficult for me to learn from other people how to knit because it takes me more time. My right hand is really awkward. My left hand is really awkward. And so it took me a good amount of time. I. Uh, taught myself basically how to knit off of MarthaStewart.com when I was, yeah, I think 11, 10 or 11. And I, um, yeah, I, it was really tricky. And once I, but once I got it, I really got it and I got really into it. I made scarves for everything. I've tried making gifts for people for Christmas and I would knit with like my mom's kitchen twine and anything and with chopsticks, like anything I could get my hands on. And I, um, yeah, I kind of just kind of ran with it. But then when I was 13, I started dealing with a lot of chronic pain in my spine, which later got diagnosed as ankylosing spondylitis or spondyloarthropathy, um, which involves a lot of pain. Um, and the pain clinic that I was attending when I was about 13 told me that I need to take up something to get my mind off of what I'm doing, whether it be like playing video games or do something with my hands to distract me from the amount of pain that I was in. Um, and technically still am. I, so I decided to take up knitting um, more and use that as my pain management. And so I would make little hats and I would just mainly made hats at that time. I knit a lot of hats um, and I didn't know anything about circular needles. So everything was seamed. Um, I just, I did the best that I could with what I had. And I found it, I still find it as a really great way to manage chronic pain. If I'm in a lot of pain, my family all knows that I will like seclude myself somewhere in the house and I'll just knit and knit and knit and knit and knit, and knit, and knit for hours and hours on end. Um, and around that time I started in high school doing fashion class. And so I did quite a bit of sewing there. Um, I didn't find it very challenging because I already knew how to sew. I made many things like I made some pillows, I made pillowcases, I made um, pajama pants, I self-drafted my own shirts. Um, and then at around 14, I got my own sewing machine and so I would sew in my room. I would take old bed sheets and turn them into dresses. And I did a lot of like self-drafting. I didn't really like to follow a pattern. Um, and then all of that kind of went to the wayside after I graduated high school and started working. Um, I didn't have as much time. I did knit um, from time to time, um, off and on. And then when I was 22, my family, um, my cousin started having babies and all these people around me started having babies and so I picked it back up again as a way to make baby gifts 
And that's where I really started to develop my skill. Um, I would make baby sweaters and I would make baby booties and I made pants and I would make blankets and I made everything. And so I kind of like turned it into a little side hustle where I would sew baby clothes and knit baby things. And um, yeah, I, but I really like attribute a lot of the things that I know now to that time where I was making all of these little teeny tiny adorable little things. Um, yeah, I, but I made it into like a side hustle and I thought that it would be a way to earn money. And so I started myself up and I started making things and they would sell, but it was slow and I needed to work and I didn't have a lot of time. And so I um, kind of, it, it came and went for a couple of years where I would make things like as a side hustle and make things for babies and mainly. Um, and then when uh, I moved out um, in, in with my then boyfriend and now husband, I was in college and I started making a lot of, a lot more baby things because it was another round of babies and I was gifting things to everyone. Um, and then it kind of just like snowballed. This was about three years ago and yeah, I, my knitting took over. I, um, yeah, I made a lot of small things and then, um, for a bunch of different people. And then a couple, two Christmases ago, I started making little dolls and I did sell them. I sold probably like 20 of them in a span of like three weeks, right before Christmas. And I like spent my whole time that Christmas just like sewing and sewing and sewing and making these adorable little dolls and um I was also at work all, at the time due to my health problems and I wasn't really able to keep up um I was working at a fertility clinic and I just couldn't keep up I couldn't deal with the stress it manifested in my body and I just ended up feeling atrocious and so I had to um say goodbye to that job and I took about six months off work and so yeah I spent that whole time like sewing and knitting little outfits for these dolls and like sewing different outfits and they're self-drafted and so like I yeah I made up my own patterns um it was a really awesome time and then um a local yarn store posted that they were hiring and I was so excited because I had applied there a few times and I'd never heard back or seen anything and I thought that that would be like something that I would really love to do and it turns out it is something that I really love to do um so my, my doll business went on to the back burner when I got the job um, and then spawned inside of me this like desire to selfishly make things. And so, yeah, I, I call myself the selfish maker because I'm not trying to turn my knitting into a side hustle. I just want to knit. I want to knit things for me. I want to knit things for the little people that are in my life. Um, I want to knit for my spouse and my family members, but like when I'm making things, I want them to be the things I want to make and I want them to be my art. I am trying desperately, like my mantra for this year is to turn my knitting and my making and my sewing into art um, and my art. Um, I, yeah, I work at a local yarn store here in Calgary and it is awesome like I really love it I work with some really amazing people and I get to do what I love which is helping people get excited about knitting and uh, crocheting and any sort of making like I just I love I love helping people discover new passions and um, discover projects that they're really excited about um, yeah it's my favorite thing I, I I really enjoy helping pick out colors for people and helping people find new patterns that they didn't think they could do and the excitement in their face and they realize that they can do color work and they can do brioche and they can do all of these things that they never knew that they could do um, and inspiring them to just try um, because basically anything to do with making is just trying, especially knitting is so forgiving. It's so forgiving because you can just rip it back or you can fix a stitch that you dropped a million feet ago and 
pull it back up and helping people realize it just takes a little bit of like childish gumption and to be able to be like, you know what, I'm just going to blaze through. I'm just going to try it. Cause like the worst thing you can do is mess up and start again. Like it's really not that big of a deal. And it's, it's so exciting and it's my favorite. It's my favorite thing. And I love that I get to do it for work. Um, and so, yeah, I currently am doing a ton of knitting. I'm just gonna do the finished objects that I've done from February onward, because if I go too far, like back to December, like I, I have too many things done. I do too much knitting. I probably knit about four to eight hours a day, <laughs> depending on the day. So, yeah, so let's get into it. I am gonna start with my finished objects and then we'll go into my works in progress and then we can talk about some other things. All right, so um, number one on my list is I made, I got um, the Knits About Winter book by Emily Fodden of Viola Knits or Viola Yarns. And oh, it's so beautiful. And it has really gotten me through these dreary um, end of and full, through the winter months. Um, and so my first one is this guy. It's the Sky Hill hat. Um, I made this guy out of a Stella Paca Merino in a gray. And then um, I also used the Patagonia in a gray as well. And they're both DK and it's held together and it makes this really wonderful hat. It's just, it's so warm. Um, this is the shorter style one. I just wanted it to like sit on top of my head while I work and I can have braids or buns sticking out the bottom of it. Um, yeah, I really love it and it's so soft. I have also made another one of these because I wanted a longer one for when I'm walking my dog. Um, I just finished this one quite recently. I'm calling this one my Venice Beach hat. I knit this while I was in California a couple of weeks ago while sitting on the beach and it is um, Lasco Worsted by Ancient Arts Yarn in Irish Linen. And then I held it double with a strand of mohair. It is the Lang Millie Calori in the number, um, in the color 51. Yeah, oh, I love this one. This one's my, my favorite one, I think. Um, it's so warm and soft and I just, I really love how the, the um, mohair has different colors in it. Um, so you can see the orange and the pinks and there's some blue in there and it's just, yeah, it's so fluffy and so wonderful. I'm so happy with how that one turned out. Um, yeah, so there's the two, my two Sky Hill hats. I have also, I've been working on knitting a pair of socks a month. And I failed for January. I did not knit any socks in January. Um, but I did finish a pair of socks. Um, so these guys are the Terracotta Socks by Woolfield Designs. Um, I actually work with um, Woolfield on it at work. She works in a different part of the shop, but yeah, we work together. Um, I did a test knit, so and I when I did the test knit, I only knit one of them because I didn't have time to do both because I had a bunch of other things on the needles that I needed to get off. But I finally finished both, and I love them. They're so nice, and the the stitch is really easy to memorize, and that texture, um, yeah, it's wonderful. And I made that out of Lodge Pole Pine by um, Ancient Arts. It's their um, sock nado base, which I really love. And then I'm gonna, um, my other finished object is the cardigan that I'm wearing. I'm gonna insert a little video here and I'll just talk over it. Um, I made this guy out of Patagonia by Juniper Moon. Um, it's, if you can't tell, one of my favorite yarns. I make, made another one of these um, just before Christmas for somebody else, um, but it's not a cardigan, but I have made it a cardigan by sticking it. So I knitted in the round and then I cut my knitting and knit a button band. And yeah, I really love it. I really, cardigans are my favorite staple piece. Um, yeah, I, I found this a really nice pattern to work with. 
I really enjoyed the color work. It was really interesting, but my main problem with color work is usually if I'm doing color work, it goes a little too quick because I will just sit and knit it until it's done. And then the rest of the garment, if it's just a color work yoke is a lot of boring stockinette in the single color for a really long period of time. <laughs> Anyways, um, so they have, that's my cotton grass jumper with a million mods. Um, yeah, I'm really in love with it. I'm just gonna quickly grab a drink of water and then we'll move on to a couple more finished objects that are actually for a friend of mine. Um, so I did a little trade with a friend of mine, which is really fun when you're in like a maker's community, like the making community. A friend of mine is currently in school for ceramics. And so her and I did are doing a little trade. And so she sent me a couple um, ceramic pieces, a mug and some uh, like a salt cellar, little pot for my counter and then a little tiny vase. And I'm sending her back actually right after I film this, uh, a pair of socks. So first is these these little socks here. Um, I self-drafted this pattern and I am incredibly proud of it. I had never knit toe-up socks or two at a time socks ever in my whole life. And so I um, knit these guys basically on my own. Yeah, I came up with it basically on my own. I did reference something for the afterthought heel, but I everything else is pretty much um, on my own. I did these guys out of West Yorkshire Spinners in the color 862 Mallard. And it's just a beautiful self-striping. It's really fun to knit with because you're it's constantly changing and it's just such beautiful colors. And then for the heels and the cuffs, I used Knit Pick Stroll in the color Dusk. And oh, I, I hope she really loves them. I did a little um, ribbed, um, like a ribbed cuff top part of the sock. And then the top of the foot is also ribbed just so it will sn like fit snugly to the foot. I, yeah, oh, I really love them. I can't wait to knit myself a pair of these. Uh, and I hope she loves them. And the second thing that I made for her are these. These guys are Nufi Mittens. The pattern is by Nadine Reeves. I'll have that linked below in the show notes. Um, I made them, I can't remember. Let me just, I'm just checking my notes quickly. Um, this color here, this reddish color is Hayes Creek um, get by gather, Hayes Creek Heathers by Gathering Yarns. Um, oh, it's so beautiful to knit with and it's just like such a good color. I don't know if you can see, it's like a really good red and it has a bunch of different other like brighter earth tones in it. So it's like the brown base and then there's some yellow and some red and yeah, oh, they're so beautiful. And I love this pattern. I make these for everybody. And then that, um, this color here is Cascade 220. It's non superwash. It's just like the regular workhorse yarn and yeah oh they're so comfy and they'll be so warm for her and so yeah that's what i made for my friend um yeah i guess we can work move on to my works in progress i'm gonna have to bend down and pick up some of my works in progress just give me a second here so my oldest work in progress here is Beth's shawl let's see here by Jen Monahan or the fiber workshop um, it is the pattern for one of the shawls on the new little women by Greta Gerwig I watched the movie and I fell madly in love with the costumes and everything that went into that film like I loved it so much I saw it twice in theaters <laughs> And I will buy it when it comes out because I'm a little obsessed with it. Um, but this is the shawl. I'll link the full thing uh, in the description. But it is a 
a triangle shawl that will have two ties on the end so I can wrap it around my body and tie it behind my back. And it has a, um, some stripes in it. Um, I have um, this color here is uh, Mule Spinner by Custom Woolen Mills. And it's a lovely, very rustic, magical yarn. Oh, I love it. And uh, yeah, so I'm working on that guy. This other stripe colors is this really nice charcoaly dark, dark brown. I love that it has like still has like plant matter and stuff in it. Oh, I love earthy wools. Um, and then this is pip color work. And so I'm gonna use that for sections, um, small lines within the shawl. And I'm really looking forward to having this guy done. It's gonna be so beautiful. I can't wait to see how this blocks. I'm imagining it's gonna like puff up quite a bit. I didn't do a gauge swatch for it, um, which I will say because it's a shawl and I didn't, I just didn't see that it being necessary. Um, yeah, and so I'm working on that guy and I can't wait for to have that in my life. And then while I was in California, I was working on this guy here. So this is my fern and Feather um, by Jennifer Steinglass. And I did the yoke in Salty Dog by Spin Cycle Yarns. And so it has a really awesome gradient effect and it was really fun to work on. And then the background color is just Cascade 220 in the color 4002. And oh man, I love it. I look forward to having that in my life as well. I also need to work a little more on it because I'm now to the stocking section and I've lost all interest. So I need to get back to it. I have my fun little charms on there from the yarn store I work at. Ah, it's so cute. Anyways, uh, and then my final, I think it's my final, no, I have one more as well. I have to run and grab, um, but I have these guys. So these are going to be my rye socks by Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern and it has this really cute um, garter stitch section in the front of it. And I'm making it out of hedgehog fibers in the color Sage. Um, and it's knitting up pretty well. This was the very first fancy like hand dyed yarn I ever purchased and it sat in my stash. and. I have this tendency to put things into my stash and then not uh, use them because I think they're too nice or I'm waiting for something perfect to come along and then I don't use them. And by the time that I get around to like thinking, oh, maybe I'll use this and I look at it, it's out of style or it's just out of like not what I'm into anymore. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna knit myself some socks. These can be my February, March socks. Uh, and yeah, I look forward to having these really pretty, pretty socks in this lovely green color. And I'm just gonna quickly run to behind the camera and grab my other work in progress here. Just give me one second. So like I said, I love doing baby knits for people um, and quite a few members of my family and people around me are having babies right now. It's another one of those baby seasons. And so I decided that I'm gonna make a few little sweaters and some little pants, but for now I'm just making this little sweater. Um, I'm gonna do a contrasting button band as well. And yeah, I did it out of Cascade 220 Merino Superwash. And it is so soft and so cute. And I can't wait to see how it's done um, when it's done, but I'll show you in the next podcast because I'll probably finish this today. Um, how it looks, but it's so cute. And yeah, I love the color blocking and oh, it's so cute. And I make, when I make, baby cardigans, I tend, I kind of self-draft them. This 
yeah, I, it's just a raglan style with little increases and I think I cast it on 38 stitches for the neck and then I increase to, um, I have like set yoke lengths that I like and then I just knit the body for about five, six inches down here. And then the sleeves, I always like to make an extended cuff because I usually make them into like zero to six months size-ish. And so I like to make the cuffs long so when they're small, you can fold them up and they're out of the way. And then when they get a little taller, they can kind of grow with the baby because yeah, it's so sweet. I'm so excited for this one, it's so cute. And uh, yeah, so that's it for my works in progress right now. And that's it for my February finished objects. Um, pretty much all that I have to show other than knitting things. Um, I'm currently, things that I'm reading or listening, I usually listen to Audible so that I can knit and read, read at the same time. So um, yeah, I'm currently listening to Wuthering Heights on Audible. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I've never read it and I think I'm really happy that it's being read to me because the difference in tone and having the accent added for me by somebody who actually has the accent instead of my brain trying to do it, which is what it does when I'm reading a period piece sort of um, book. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm currently enjoying it. I think I'm only like six or seven chapters in. I started last night, but yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna have a little Bronte sisters love affair for a little while and then I'll move on to something else. Um, but today I got one of my Christmas presents for the first time, which may sound funny, but um, me and my mom like to gift each other magazine subscriptions because um, yeah, they're kind of a gift that keeps on giving through the whole year. So I got um, my first issue of Taproot, which I'm really excited for. Um, they have some really lovely things in there. I, I really enjoy when um, magazines don't have ads in them and they feature like local writers and that sort of thing. There's some really good light, um, really good recipes and stories and oh, just such beautiful artwork. I'm just like really excited for it. Like, look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. Let me see. Look, it's just, ah, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm so excited to sit down with a cup of tea later and read this. It just came in the mail today. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. And I think that is it for my first podcast. Thank you all for watching. I really enjoyed having you here. And um, yeah, I'll be back soon. See you later.